So we are talking standard deviation. Okay, and went through an exercise um, last lesson, <coughs> which made you think about the reason for having standard deviation. Uh, do you remember what that reason, what that situation was? Well, so in situations like this one, where you have uh, darts on a board, if you get the mean point, uh, then both of the mean points would be the same. However, one is obviously better than the other. So in this situation best way to judge like how far someone was off the target isn't by the mean point, it's by standard deviation. Okay, so like how many centimeters they were off the bullseye. Yeah, so I think the idea is, as you know, for this one, like the data you had from France and Luxembourg, it was the means, the median, they were the same. Okay? So I kind of put this dartboard up to show you that although the mean point could be exactly the same, there's obviously very different sets of data. There's a very different distribution there. All right? Um, so just to add to this a little bit, so you can compare, well, what if another person, their, theirs were like that? How would that change the whole situation? Move what? Move what? Yeah, so the mean point here, that would be the mean, okay? Now, a symbol that you're going to see, that is now for the mean, it's a mu. Okay? Is that green? Yes. Oh. Okay. So it's a U with a long tail on it, okay? All right, so what we're looking for, so you can see that if the data is equally spaced but different, the means will change. So what we're looking at is something that I can compare and say, well, the means are the same, so the red and the blue, but the spread of the data is different, right? So we went through, uh, you went through a process, didn't you? All right, a calculation of that table. What did you do? Greg, first step. So you find the mean Okay, so first of all, we found the mean of the data. Yes. Okay. Then? Square. No. Not yet. Yeah. No. We find the difference in the data. Yeah. So we find the difference from the mean. Alright. Then we... And find the mean difference of the mean. Nope. No, you mean square. Square the difference. Square the differences. And then? So the mean of the square of the differences. And then finally, square root. And what was the reason for square rooting at the end? You reckon? Because um, unit, uh, unit yeah. if you square it, you change the unit. We need it to the correct unit. So we're basically undoing the square. So what you need to understand is, first of all, why? We talked about this before. Here, and that's not painting. Why do we square those differences? Thank you. Well, I remember you put in zero. So why, yeah, why would we end up with zero? What was the one reason? There, there is one very easy, clear reason why we, if we find the mean of differences only, we could end up with zero. Might not end up with zero, but it's, They've given you a lovely example where it is zero. Any reason you understand? Do you remember why? No. no? It's because um, the, the uh, points were equal and opposite. And like, they, uh, they all. Uh, and when you say equal zero. and opposite, what do you so mean? Like, um, they were equally far out, but they were opposite to each other. Yeah, so opposite direction. But this is slightly different being a dartboard. 
if we were just on a number line, okay, how close am I? So if I said, um, remember when we did that whole list of mean rectangles? Some of our means were above the actual mean, and some of them were below. And if I just add those up, if I take the difference, well, a difference is always one number subtract the other, yeah? yeah? If I do that and then add all those together, some are negatives and some are positives, and they will cancel each other out, okay? Now, if I am a human being doing this calculation, what would I just do? How do I get rid of negatives? If I want to, if I'm finding the difference and I just want to forget the negatives, what do I do? I don't know. What's that called doing, though? Cancelling out? No. Absolute value. Absolute value. I would take an absolute value. Now, as a person, just writing this down, I actually don't really need to consider that much at all. All right? Because actually, I would always, which is why. When you're little, you get there might be some confusion. People think, but well, you always take the smaller one from the larger one, don't you? Pardon? You, oh, yes. Yeah, you always take the smaller number from the larger number. Yeah. So if I said to you, um, this costs $50, how far away are you from that exact amount of money? Well, if I've got 55 and you've got 45, we would both say uh, five, although I'm above and you're below. Whereas a mathematical operation that a computer would do, they would do 50 subtract whatever your amount is. So 50 subtract 55 would be negative 5, but you would do 50 subtract 45, which would give you 5. So there would be a difference. So what we're doing is we're talking about what do we need to make this a mathematical operation, a function that can be plugged into a computer and it will always do the right thing. Okay? And the way to do that is it doesn't really matter what way round you do the subtraction, whether it's a positive or negative, if you square that, you will end up with a positive. And then you can add all those up, and you've always got positives. Does that make sense? Yes. That's why we needed to square the differences, and then we square root to undo that, to get the right units back. All right? So let's just talk through this now as a formula. Sorry, question. Would it be like never mind? Sorry. So the formula. Have you written that down by the way? That little list I've talked about. Because I'll need to refer, you to refer. So standard deviation, alright, has uh, notation, which you need to get used to. Uh, we can do standard deviation of a sample, okay, because there are two different things, you can do standard deviation of a sample or you can do standard deviation of a population, and you know what that means now, don't you? Sample and population, you took your notes from your book, all right? Um, and a calculator or a computer, if you put a whole set of data in, you can ask it to do standard deviation of a sample or standard deviation of a Population is done slightly differently, as you'll see in your book. But we're going to do standard deviation of sum. God, can you tell what we have sampled? Or is it on an open Yeah, it will just take a sample. All right. Now, so when I do it on my um, GDC, my calculator, it will, if you run the, the thing to work out your statistics, it will give you two versions of standard deviation with two different numbers slightly. So the one that we're talking about at the moment is a sample. So you're always going to work in samples. And the notation for that is this. That is the little symbol for standard deviation. Alright? And we're going to, there is a formula there, it's in the book, but we're going to build it up because you know how to do it. Okay? Um, yes. Um, this part doesn't matter, but here it says use Greek letters for populations and use of So that's the convention that they're doing. That's okay. what has been used if you're interested in that stuff, why we've got all different things. Right, but this is the one I know, for instance, the IB, the diploma, your calculator uses for some. Right. 
So the standard deviation, just to remind you, can be simplified to the mean distance from the mean, okay? Just to kind of simplify. So let's work out what formula would be. So the standard deviation is what do you do first? Find the mean of the data, okay? So this symbol here, you've seen before, means the mean, yeah? Yeah. Little bar over the top. So let's say we've got that. Now we have actually got another formula that we can write down for the mean. We'll talk about that in a bit. Right, but what do we do now? What was step two? We've found the mean, we've written it down. And how do I write that? How do I find the difference? No, no, don't overcomplicate it. How do you find the difference of two things? No. Subtract. So we take the mean, uh, it doesn't really matter which way around you go, as we've seen, and I subtract each individual point. So I've got the mean of the x values and then each x point. Now this is only for one point. That's all right. We, we can add to this in there. So that's a single point there. I've taken that point from the mean point. What do I do next with that result? Square it. So I would need to write brackets, and I would square that. Still with me? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now what do I do? Here. Find the mean of the squares. So this is where we need to be able to write down how do we do that. So let's over here, let's talk about how would I write down that I'm finding the mean of the x values. Any ideas? Well, mu is for mean as well. Yeah. So that means I've already found it. I'm going to write this, see whether you understand. Oh, is that, is that the Greek, is that uppercase sigma? Yes. Meaning the sum of? Yes. Oh. oh. So this is... Excel, yeah. Remember you see if auto sum? Yeah. Means the sum of. Okay? Fx, now you'll notice that Fx, yeah, your textbook, I told you which page to open it to. Um, Fx does not mean F of X, because there's no brackets. Fx means frequency multiplied by the points. So you remember doing the working out the mean from a data set group frequency? Yeah? And therefore F is just the frequency. So how I work out the mean is I do the sum of the frequencies times the point and divide it by the sum of the frequencies. You remember doing that, right? Yes. In your groups table, you did that one times that, then added those results, then divided it by all the frequencies added together. So that's what that means. Um, so it seems like you get different answers when if you so if you just do absolute value. Don't go too far, just in case some of people are not quite with us. Okay. Yeah, but let's finish this off before we discuss what we did. So that was that's for the mean. Right? So I've got to find the mean of those points. Okay? So the way to write it is, I've got all these points. I'm going to assume they're all different. Right? So I'm going to do the sum of all those points squared. Okay? And then you divide it by what? Not yet. I'm finding the mean, aren't I? Oh, free. Yeah. What have you got in your book? Because frequency, we've not really got frequency data now. We've got lots of different individual points. What does it say for the formula? You got it? Has n. Yeah. 
So let's go to that. Values. Because we're not dealing with frequency tables now, we've got n. So n is the number of values. The number of values, the number of points there are. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've added them up and then I've divided so I've added up the differences squared. Got it? Mm -hmm. I've divided by the number of times I've done that, the number of points there are. Right? Why am I not doing frequency data? Well, we're assuming that I've got lo lots of individual points. Yeah? None of them are the same. That's what I'm assuming it's for me. Even if they are, I'm just saying they're all the same. The final step, square root. So we've then got a square root. Okay? And that is the standard deviation. Now just for you, so you know, so you've seen it before, this thing here, standard deviation squared, so that's before I do the square root, all right? That is called the variance, all right? It's called the variance. So if I take standard deviation, I square it, I undo the square root. So all those differences squared, then added together and divided. Before I square root it, that number is called the variance. And that on its own is a measure of how spread the data is. Okay? But to have it in correct units, we square root it to get our standard deviation rather than variance. Does that make sense? All right? By the way, just to let you know, in case, I've never had to teach this until diploma level before. Not in IGCC or anything like that. So this is where it's in your course, it's in extended maths NYP course. So your AC equivalent, and definitely this is why you might be finding it a little bit right. So what is that second X in the equation? Because I understand that you need to find the difference but how can you find, is that the mean difference? Right. Yes. So should we, um, should we maybe go through a, a very quick, short example? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, um, let's have a look at some data then. Let's just say I've got five, seven, five, four, three as a set of numbers. And I've got um, six, eight, nine, nine, ten, four. as another set of numbers. Okay? Uh, let's compare the numbers. So, what is the mean of these numbers? Five, seven, five, four, three. So let's do x bar for each one. Doesn't matter. It's five. This one? No, it's 4.8. 4.8. This one is 7.6. Okay? So I can already see that the, the mean on the right hand side is higher. Are you jumping in there? Right, so we've got mean. Now, those mean, because there is no context to this, we don't really worry about comparing those, but let's just have a look at what happens, how to do our standard deviation. Okay? Okay. All right. So how do we do it? So first of all, I'm going to take each individual point, and it doesn't matter what way around I do this, so I've got in my formula x bar take away x. Yeah? But I'm just going to do, because I've got it written, 5 uh, subtract 4.8. Oh! 7 subtract 4.8. I'm working out the distance of each point from the mean. Yeah? So this one is 0 0.2, this one is 2.2, 0 0.2, minus 0 0.8, uh, minus uh, 1.8. Okay? That answers my question. Okay. I was just confused how you would somehow, because in the equation, I thought it was like, like I didn't have to understand how you already knew the mean difference. So I realize now you yeah. do it for every So we just do it three foot, okay, which yeah. I can understand. With a large data set, we would be using our computers to yeah. do. Yeah? Uh, this one, do I, I don't need to do it. I do it for the second one as well. 
6 minus 7.6, 8 minus 7.6, minus 7.6, 6 minus 7.6. Okay, so it's a lot of repetition. So that's minus 1.6, that's 0 0.4, that's what, 1.4, 1.4, 2.4, 1.3. Sorry, is it 2 points minus 2.3? 4. 3.3. 4. 3. 3. 3. 4. 4. 4 minus 7.6. 7. 4. Yeah, why am I talking yeah. about that? I had a 3 in my head, so it should have been 3. For the top one. No, that's fine. No, it should be 3.6. Yeah. 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 Why did I lose track right there? So negative 3.6. That's why I'm losing it. Yes, Tebo, did we make another mistake? No, this, uh, the mean of, of this uh, difference is will always be equal to zero. No, not always. No, definitely not always. They gave you an extreme example with that exercise, okay? Just to show you potentially you could have zero. But what we're looking at is it the mean difference would not be correct if I've got some positives. It would be way below what it should be. They just gave you an extreme example of zero. So what's the next stage of doing standard deviation? Um, so each difference we need to square. Okay. So we take this and we square that. What do I get? Um, 0 0.04, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84, 4 .84,
1.33. Yeah. So my standard deviation for that first set of data is 1.33. Okay. So what does that mean? So each of yeah. um, on average, each one is off from the mean by one point by factor of one point. Exactly. Not by factor, but by one point three three. Yeah. On average, like it, every single point is one point three three away from the mean. Oh, one average. Yeah. Some are closer, some are further away, but on average. So, what would you like the standard deviation to be? Zero. Zero. If your standard deviation is zero, what does that mean? So everything is perfect. Like everything is perfect. Everything well, not perfect, is, but everything, everything is. The same amount of well, one. Is, which, how far from the mean? Zero. They're all the same. Every single number is exactly the same. Therefore, the mean is exactly the same as every number. All right? It should be. So your standard deviation is zero. That's not going to happen very often. All right? Um, if it is, we probably don't need to worry about calculating means and things. It's just all the same. All right? Uh, so you, what you're trying to do is you are trying to justify your use of the mean as a way of interpreting your data. This is very important for you guys with your criterion D and C. Justifying your use of a number. Should I use the mean to analyze this data or not? Right? Now you have a, an actual number to say, I have calculated my standard deviation and it is small, so I'm happy that the mean is a good representative of my, my group, my data. But your standard deviation is in like the hundreds, that's terrible. Well, no. Like, See, actually, what if it's a population of like, like a big country or something? Uh, like one. That's, yeah, no, it's good. But the fact that you said it is good, definitely. It depends on context, right? I would say, is 1.33 a large or a small standard deviation. Doesn't matter, like, what's well, the data? Well, well you know the data. data. What, the, like, what is it? It's pretty small. Yeah, like, is it meters oh, off of a dartboard or centimeters? Well, I'm asking you based on the numbers that I've given you. Oh, oh okay. Small. Uh, pretty small. Actually, and my number is three, four, big. five. Big. If I look at it, three, four, you know, I'm, I'm 30 odd percent away. Yeah. That's quite large. Right? I could have, I think you're already commenting, I could have a standard deviation of several million and it be considered a small standard deviation. Because if I was looking at the mean errors of calculating distances between stars, for instance, if I'm into that sort of stuff, Right? If I look at all my estimated distances between stars, and then I did an actual calculation, and the standard deviation was a few million kilometers. You're pretty close. You're pretty close when you're talking light years, aren't you? Yeah. All right? So you cannot just say, well, people have asked me this before. It's like, well, what's a small standard deviation? I can't tell you what a small standard deviation is. It depends what we are referring to. And when, for instance, we've got two sets of data here, so I'll ask you and say you can calculate standard deviation for the second one, all right? Let's say I'm comparing boys and girls' results in something, all right? Their average, their mean math score. And then I find out that the mean math score is exactly the same for boys and girls. But I find that the standard deviation for boys is large and standard deviation for girls is small. The boy's mean is not a reliable measure for the group. And that's just another piece of information. Yeah? So we should write that down. Yes? Isn't there an easier way to just find, find this average distance away from the mean of How would you do it? Absolutely. Um, finding the mean of the data and like, finding. Yeah, we did that. And then 
and then uh, you do one more step. Just um, then find the distance away, each point the distance away from that. So we did that. And then average. How do you average it? Which we did. But what do you in what do you have to incorporate? Yeah, but that was no, what do you have to incorporate? We're gonna do you do the absolute value. You have to do the absolute value. So you have to put a step back in. So we've got exactly the same number of steps. But what I'm saying is Remember, the whole point was we need a mathematical function, an operation that can be performed by a calculator, by a, oh, by a, yeah, by a computer. All right? Yes, you could say, in my head, I'll do it quicker. But actually, you're not. You're, the squaring is simply for a computer to do the absolute value and then square root it. Yeah. yeah. But you're saying you get a different answers. I got what? For, yeah. the France, for the France data of the weather, I, I did that. For using absolute value, I got a standard deviation of 2.4. And couldn't you think of why? Well, because squaring certain things has a greater difference than squaring. Yeah. So is it really a good way to, like... But because you're also bringing down by squaring. Yeah. I know, but still, so since... So, so I get the point. What he's saying is, I square all the individual results. Yeah. If I square a larger number, I get a larger change from what it was, yeah. Yeah. all right? But then I only square root, or one to get injured for the race. I only square root the final answer, therefore they're all treated equally, okay? Well, but we need to make a decision as to what we're actually going to use as a measure, right? And it, this is what we do. We, we can plug this into a computer, it will do it automatically for us, no thinking. Because computers are stupid, they only do what your programs do. You cannot yet, maybe one of you will do it, you can't program a computer and say, you make your mind up what you want to do with the next step. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Right? Computers can't do absolute value, you can't just program it to say take away the minus sign. Or I think computers are too smart to be wrong. I mean my calculator can do absolute value. So. No, computers are too stupid to be wrong. But how do we put it into a, a I mean, maybe it is possible, maybe it is possible, but this is what we have done, this is what we do for our standard deviation, right? Um, and there is a difference in sample and population, you know why, but you can have a look. But what I really need you to get, let's write this final thing down. So, um, standard deviation, okay? should be small if the mean is to be reliable. Okay, that's important, isn't it, that word? It's that, can we rely on a certain value? So I haven't read, I haven't finished marking your work, by the way, but some of you still are uh, misusing words like justify, verify, and reliable, and that kind of thing, and accuracy, all right? Still need to look at whether something's accurate or not, all right? So standard deviation should be small if the mean is to be reliable, okay? Small, it depends on context. Okay. You can add a little note in your own notes, if you like, for what, what that means. Give yourself a couple of examples, you know. 0 0.01 standard deviation could be huge if you're talking atomic distances. Yeah, distance between particles and things like that. That's huge. Several million kilometres could be tiny if we're talking about space. We're talking about like distance from um, yeah, distance from stars. Yeah. What well, should we then consider potentially to make a, another decision? I know you did it in your work. Percentage error. So what would our standard deviation be as a percentage of our values? Oh. That's something we could look at. So if it's a 
0.001% difference, you know, compared to some of our point, our mean point, then we're fine, aren't we? All right? Even then, though, could you still have... If it's 0.001%, yeah, we're setting it as a percentage standardizes it, doesn't Even it? For, not for if racing, I'm though. 1 million, yeah, if I take a mean of 5 billion, yeah. that could be a small percentage. Whereas 1 centimeter, when I'm talking a mean of 3 centimeters, mm -hmm. is 33%. Yeah. Much bigger, yeah. and I can compare in that way, you know? So small depends on context. Really does. Yeah. Standard deviation. Uh, but it's this point here. It's this standard deviation is a way of judging whether the mean is a reliable measure of central tendency to use or not. Wait, what's the problem? So percent difference is a good way for distances, but what about like for races? So say like Formula One, they go super fast, like 200 miles per hour. Yeah. Right? So say uh, the mean was like 43 seconds, uh, and someone got uh, like 42 seconds. That's, you could say, is a low percent difference. But in Formula 1, one second is like many meters. But you could say for a rally car racing, which cars go slower, if, one, if the mean was 43, but someone got 42, that percent difference isn't as much, because you didn't cover as much distance. Second, that's a yeah. yeah, but you're changing a lot of things now yeah. because you've changed the course that they're doing it on. Yeah, I guess. So if I put two Formula One cars on a road circuit and I put yeah. two rally cars on the same road circuit, then the difference between their things, you know, so a rally car will take longer to do that circuit, therefore the difference will be yeah. Potentially exactly the same as a percentage. So you're saying 43 seconds, 42 seconds, and then the rally cars do a completely different circuit, a completely different conditions, and still do 43 and 42. Then I'm not comparing like for like anyway. No, but even I'm yeah, saying, no, I understand what you're saying. Even if it was the same course, though, even just slower yes, cars on the same yes, course. Yes, but the rally car. The Formula One car would take 43, 42 seconds to Formula One car. Yeah. Rally cars in the same thing, right? They would take longer, yeah. there would be a bigger gap, yeah. but the comparison as a percentage so would, would be the same. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah so you get, get what that. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, summarize. Nick, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is the average distance. And what's it used for? Is uh, used to uh, check the mean is reliable. Okay. Ashley, what would you do if your standard deviation, this uh, we haven't talked about yet, what would you do if your standard deviation was relatively large? So what would you do? Yes. You get that point. There's a reason for doing this. This is to help you make a judgment and therefore do something else. All right. I don't just say, here's my standard deviation, my mean is rubbish, I shouldn't use it. The end. Well, how are you going to exactly. exactly. What do you do next? Why, if I'm going to choose not to use the mean, what do I use next? All right. Maybe you can add that to your notes. If I have a large standard deviation, I'm not going to tell you which one because it will depend what the data looks like. Yeah? But you need to write in your notes this should, if the central, if the standard deviation is too large, this should prompt me to do a different form of analysis. Or could that help you say, okay, there's no correlation between blank and blank? Or would you, you well, it's not use, correlation. Yeah, you wouldn't it? use standard deviation. No. No, we're, we've kind of don't mix things up, so this is a way of just the mean. Um, form of analysis, yeah. As Ashton said, she might choose to use the mode or the median. 
Or you might actually just say, I'm not going to use an average. I'm not going to use one of the averages. I'm going to look at distribution of the data. I'm going to do lots of other things to analyze this data. But I won't. I won't just say, which up to this point, you've always just gone, yeah, I'll work out the average, meaning the mean. So I'm kind of hoping at this stage now, you will never say, all right, and you will say to your um, science teachers as well, if they say, work out the average burn rate, you can turn around and say, which average would you like me to do? Right? And then, when you've decided which average you're going to do, you get you don't just write, the mean is this. You go, well, this is the mean. However, I have done standard deviation. I've noticed that actually a lot of the points are way away. I shouldn't be using the mean. This is now how your analysis goes. And this is all about justifying your results, justifying your statements, saying things are reliable and justifying it. This is where your criterion stuff comes in. But you should be making notes on that, Nick, so that when you do your next piece of work, it's better than the last one. So you use the justify. This is all about just big letters. This is about justification. Yes, um, Is standard difference of median or mode, do they have different names? Yeah. We don't. Is that, is that, okay. We are. We're not. Okay.